Hey everyone, it's Extreme Supplies. So today uh, it's time to wire up my parts caster. I've done all the shielding, I've been very patient working on parts, I've been very patient with my own laziness. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to wire uh, a strat using a mini toggle switch. Uh, seven way strat mod, or I guess it's known as the Gilmore wiring mod. There's a mini toggle switch here which allows me to activate the neck pickup at will. <laughs> Okay, so if you've watched enough of our videos in the past, you'll, you'll understand that we like to give a quick overview of the components and the tools that we're going to be using to, to do the job in hand. Uh, so as I've just said, we're going to be doing uh, a seven-way, or I guess a lot of people know it as the Gilmore wiring mod, strat wiring mod that Gilmore uses, or has used. So it's basically a little single pole double throw SPDT toggle, mini toggle switch which uh, sits in between the, the main controls and, the, and the, the blade switch so this little hole here which you'll see, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second and what it does is when it's turned on, it turns on the neck pickup so what that allows you to do, as I've just explained, is to have the bridge and the middle uh, and the neck all on at the same time or the bridge and the neck on at the same time uh, which is quite a unique sound uh, I've got to admit, all three on together at the same time I guess it depends on your amp but it's, it's not a noticeable difference um, for my blocked ears anyway uh, right then so just before we carry on we actually do a similar setup to this it's a seven way strat harness that we sell on the website but it's the other way around so it's, it actually uses a switch to turn on the bridge pickup but it uses a push pull pot for the volume control so you push uh, pull the pot up and it activates the bridge pickup which gives you exactly the same combination all three or the bridge and the neck on at the same time however having a push pull pot on this track can be a little bit of a hassle um, when you're playing or you're gigging I mean I have no issues with it whatsoever but some people do so another way of doing it as we're showing you today is to use one of these uh, little cheeky toggle switch which as I say just turns on whichever pickup you select um, whichever pickup you wire to the switch so you, we, you can do the bridge or the neck there's no point doing the middle is there let's be honest because that's what the five way switch does okay so obviously one of the first things you're going to need to do is drill a hole somewhere in this region it's entirely up to you where you want to put it but I put mine very close to the controls and I'll show you why I've done that in a second uh, if you watched the previous video on shielding a strap you you would have seen this so I'm using this uh, Aluminium shielding plate. I'll put a link on eBay, uh, a link in the description where I got it from. I got it from eBay. Uh, I think it was a 10 or 11 quid. Uh, it's a, just a very, very thin piece aluminium sheet, which is a, acting as a shielding plate. And it's cut into the shape of a strap pit guard. Uh, all the holes are a little bit oversized, so it fits whatever pit guard and the various variations. And it's held in place by the components, so you don't have to glue it or stick it on whatsoever. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be using is this, uh, this is why the hole has been cut where it is, so this is uh, specially made, if you go onto eBay and type in Gilmore Bracket, it comes out with this, it costs £3.99, uh, it's made by uh, a guitar parts company in the UK, actually Northwest Guitars, and it's uh, a little ingenious idea, um, so it literally sits across the two pots like that, so when you fasten your, when you fasten your pots down, now this bracket is obviously where you put the switch, and the whole point of having the bracket is so that it's elevated. So when it's coming through the other side, I should really screw all this down. So you can see that you only get the top of the switch coming through. You don't want the whole, well, it doesn't matter. You don't need the bracket, obviously. It, I recommend it simply because you don't have the full length of the switch tip coming through. It's like it's hidden on, on, in the lower echelons, shall we say, of the controls. So that's that. Uh, everything else is standard. Uh, so I've got the three CTS 250k pots, so I'll be using three of those. Uh, a CRL five way spring action blade switch, top of the range. Uh, we'll be needing one of those. Switchcraft jack socket. And a 0.047 UF uh, paper and oil capacitor. So we'll be using that. So essentially, it's just your standard strat wiring components with the addition of a mini toggle switch and some cloth wire. 
so for the tools themselves, uh, pretty standard, everything we've always been using, so uh, some brass shavings just to clean my uh, soldering tip, tinned copper which I'll be using for ground wire, the silver solder itself and the soldering station, temperature adjustable, before I forget actually, the pickups I'm going to be using, uh, House of Tone, 1960s S type, uh, so that, that should come with a nice little certificate and everything. Uh, explaining what's what, the date, so these are August 2018, House of Tone pickups. But they actually show you, I mean the actual spec on the website will show that all three pickups are wired uh, approximately the same. Uh, but as you can see here, the bridge at 6.2 is slightly, very slightly overwound when you compare to the neck in the middle. And the middle pickup has a yellow wire as opposed to the white or the cream, and that just indicates that the middle pickup is reverse wound. Uh, which is obviously for hum cancelling purposes when the switch is in positions 2 and 4. Right, without any further ado, I'm going to load all my components into the pit guard. And what we're essentially doing is just going to be wiring a standard strap before we get involved with the toggle switch. Uh, so if you're wiring this from scratch, then follow this tutorial. If you're not wiring it from scratch and you've got standard strap wiring already and you just want to add this little mod, then you can skip about 5-10 minutes and then you can pick it up a bit later in the video. Okay, so load everything up just as I have here. Everything is exactly the same as you would have a standard strut. Uh, so just a couple of things that I like to do, which I highlight. The the solder terminals of the parts, I like to bend them at a, a 90, parallel with the body as such. So these are normally a bit more pointed outwards. I like to bend them up straight. Just a personal thing, you don't have to do it at all. Uh, your little toggle switch, once you install the bracket, as you can see there, it becomes elevated on top of the bracket, pickups there, and the reason why I've decided to use the bracket and why I strongly recommend it. So when you turn it over, you can see here the switch, the actual switch tip is recessed as a bit. It's kind of, it's not hidden, it's obviously there, but it's just there, it's not sticking out on top of the like a skyscraper. Uh, and for me, personal point of view when I'm playing, it just means that you know when you've got your you can use your middle finger and just flick it or like that. So cool. Right, um, the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of grounding. So I'm just going to ground this solder terminal here, as you would do with any strap. That one there. So I'm just going to turn on the soldering iron. Apologies, I should have done that in advance. And then we're going to lay down a ground wire connecting all three pots together. Um, now I know what you're thinking, I've got this grounding plate, why do I need to ground them all together? The answer is you don't. Again, it's something I've always done out of habit, just a reinforced ground. Um, there's no danger of having creating a ground loop by doing that. Uh, I do exactly the same with telecasters when you know when the control plate is obviously metal, and therefore the pots are ground grounded with each other. I still always put uh, a reinforced ground circuit in anyway. Right, so I'm gonna try and whiz through this, but not so quick to the point where you don't actually know what I'm doing. So I'm grounding. I'm gonna ground this terminal. Just gonna fill the eyelet with solder. Uh, let it cool, and whilst I'm waiting for that to cool, I'm just going to go around and tin all of the compo all of the solder points that I'm going to be using. By tin, I'm literally just going to put a very light coat of solder on it. So as you can see, hang on, I'm just going to move this so you get a more eye level point of view. Voila. So, take your wiring diagram, which again I'll put a link to at the bottom of the video, and you're just going to go around tinning all of the points, all the solder terminals that we're going to have a connection. So the way I do it, it's quite simply, hold your soldering iron behind the solder lug, then the heat that generates allows you to quite literally just draw a circle on the other side so you're never actually touching the soldering tip with your solder wire now with the 5 way switch you might as well tin every single terminal apart from this one it's the only one that's going to be uh, Naked, shall we say, it won't have any connection on whatsoever. So, again, just whiz all the way through and just tin every 
a tiny bit of solder on. All this does, it just makes it a bit easier for you when you do come to creating the actual final joint. Oh, that's the one I said don't solder. Okay, so I'm just going to ground this. So we've got another video on how to do this, but uh, you'll know that I like to bend, bend the, term, uh, the lug back onto the pot and then solder it down by creating a bridge of solder. Uh, again, another, uh, this way is easier for me, but a lot of people say it's easier just to put a little bit of wire um, through the hole, sold it to the back of the pot, and it does that the same job. Whatever's easier for you. Okay, cool. So next, we're going to put a ground wire on the side of the pots here, and I'm going to be using tinned copper, uh, which you can get anywhere. Sell it on the website, get it on eBay, and that's just to reinforce the ground. Alright, so clearly my video ed editing skills need a bit more work, but uh, anyway, as you can see, now I've got the ground wire on. Now we're just going to carry on wiring as if it was a standard Stratocaster. So we'd, we have got a previous video on how to do this, so I'm just going to run through it with a couple of pointers along the way. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is using our cloth wire. So I'm using yellow and black. Uh, you can use whatever colours you want, red, blue, off-white or cream is the normal one, I guess. Uh, so on the switch... We're going to name, we're going to number these terminals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're just going to have a, a jumper wire from coming from terminal 4, which is this one on the other side, running down and back up to terminal 5, which is on the opposite side. Uh, most diagrams will show it as a wire going straight across. That's fine as well, out of habit I like to get it down out of the way and back up. Uh, so do whatever you find easiest. So I'm just going to use a snippet of cloth wire. Uh, a lot of people don't like working with cloth wire and I don't know why, it's so easy to work with. You just push them back the cloth like so. Uh, I guess the cloth, unless you're using some very sharp wire cutters, the cloth does start to fray a bit, which is very annoying, I have to admit. But it's very easy to work with, it's doubly, doubly insulated, um, it's waxed as well, has no positive impact on your tone, which I have read somewhere, that it's good for tone, uh, bollocks is it, it's just, excuse me, it's just wire, but it's very easy to work with. And it's all the rage, so I sell it. <laughs> Go online and buy it. Very competitively priced. Two foot lengths, five foot lengths, or a 20 foot pack. Mainly for the builders, I guess that is, but. Oh, okay, uh, just before I solder this one down, sorry, I've been rambling there, but just before I solder this one in place, I'm having another wire that's coming from terminal five, which is this one. And that's gonna be going to the input lug here of the volume control. So I just want to feed that in before we solder them down. And if you're pedantic like me, you can just snip whatever the ends. Right, and then this wire here that's coming from terminal 5, like I say, is going to go to the input of the volume control. Uh, I'm not going to put it in just yet, because that's also where we're going to be connecting our mini toggle switch, but I'm just going to get it ready and get it out of the way. that in. So just snip it to length 
push the cloth back. And just keep it out of the way for now. We'll come to that later. Okay, so next we're going to carry on with the switch. So we're going to do terminal 7, which is this one. And that's going to be going to this lug here on the, the second tone control. So I'm just going to pop that in. So exactly the same again. So I'm just going to solder that in place. and connect to the other end, like I say. To the second tone control. Now when I was tinning, I've accidentally filled that terminal, excuse me. I've completely filled that time I was soldered by mistake, uh, so if you do happen to do that, it's simply a case of just heating it up, feeding it through. Like so. Okay, so carrying on with the switch, we need another wire coming from terminal 8, so that's the last one here, on the side facing me as I'm speaking, and that's going to be going to the middle terminal of the volume control. I'm just going to get a bit of wire and do exactly the same. So push the cloth out of the way. Feed it through, just like that. And again, just solder it down. Oh, it's come loose. Sorted, and then that's going to go to the middle terminal of the middle part of the first tone control. This one here. Okay, might as well do the capacitor while we're here. So it's a standard, you can use whatever value you want, uh, typically of a strat or single coils. Uh, generally speaking, you'd be using a 0 0.047, because uh, 
single coils are naturally a little bit bright, so they use that value to try and dampen it a little bit. Whereas if it's a 0 0.022, which is typically used with humbuckers, it allows more trouble through. So um, the higher, the lower the hang on, the lower the value in that sense, the the more trouble it's allowed to pass. Uh, so your capacitor goes to the outer like here, the tone control, and then you can feed the lead all the way through to the terminal that's uh, the middle terminal on the tone part opposite because you want them to be connected Uh, if you've got any, I'm just using a bit of rubber tubing on the capacitor leads just to stop it hitting ground. I mean, it's very unlikely, but if you're using an orange drop uh, where it's, or a capacitor that's not tubular, axial, let's just say, uh, there's more potential for it to come into contact with the ground. It's the only reason I'm using that. Uh, okay. And the other end of your capacitor goes to ground. So we can put that just here on the pot casing Sorted. Right then, so now we're going to move on to connecting the pickups and then we'll finally get the mini toggle switch involved. So when it comes to pickups, we're going to put them in exactly the same way you would as with a standard strat, standard strat wiring. Just a couple of pointers just to show you what I've done here. Um, I strongly recommend, it's always a good idea, to twist your wires together. Uh, not because it looks fancy, uh, but there's a practical reason to it. Um, if you're wrapping the hot wire with the ground, let me rephrase that, if you're wrapping the ground wire around the hot wire, uh, it's very, very limited, but it does offer a little bit of shielding uh, being protected by the ground. Um, one of the main causes of feedback, uh, especially with single coils, is long lengths of wire that aren't shielded. Which is why in a Gibson Les Paul they'll use the braided hookup wire, so that outer braid is a shield, uh, especially for the wires that go from the toggle switch to the main control cavity and out to the jack because it's uh, it's a fair distance, isn't it? It's I don't know, it's over a foot anyway. Not so much an issue in the strap, uh, but for me the same principle applies. So twist your wires together. Um, I've used a little bit of tubing here. You don't need to, but to be honest, I've just done it just to keep the wires together. Uh, okay, so we can do exactly the same as you would with a standard strat, so we're going to put all of the grounds We're going to ground them to the back of the, the volume pot here on the casing uh, And with the hot wires, it's a good idea, I mean the middle one's yellow, so I know which one's the middle It's a good idea if you've got like a label or a little bit of tubing uh, Just to identify, in this case anyway, your pickups might be different Just for me to be able to identify uh, which one's the neck and which one's the bridge So I've put a little bit of blue tubing there on the hot wire for the neck pickup. So I'm just going to get all of these out of the way for now. And we're going to solder the three braids, uh, the three grounds, excuse me, got me talking about Les Pauls now, to the pot casing. Uh, some people won't like the way I do this. Uh, I've got the equipment that allows me to get away with it, so a lot of people will tend to have the braid, um, braid to to set, to ground each pickup individually onto the pot casing because it's a bit easier. Um, 
I do it to be honest sometimes as well uh, but generally I like to twist all three of them together and solder them down as one ground so I'm just going to push the cloth back of each pickup ground like so I'm going to twist them all together There you go, and I'm going to ground them together to the pot casing. Uh, so I'm just going to. Oh, there we are. They've come untwisted already. Just like that, so they're out of the way. Again, this bit's not essential, but again, I don't have it. If you if you're concerned about soldering onto the back of pots, just heat up the area first and put a little puddle down in preparation. Spread it around, and then when you come to put the pickups in. I'm just going to tin them as well to keep them all together. Sorted. Okay, and then the, the actual pickup hot wires or live wires, whatever you call them. I'm just going to feed them under those ground wires. Just like that. Okay, so like I say, we're going to actually wire these in exactly the same as we would for standard strap. So, I'll just pull out of the way just to show you. Neck goes to this one, that's terminal three. Middle to this one, number two. And the bridge pickup is going to go to terminal one here on the end. So again, you don't have to do this, I'm just going to do it for a little bit of neatness. I'm just going to use a little bit of tubing, just to keep, keep the wires together. Just before we cut them to length. Use the heat gun. Okay. So I'm going to put my neck to terminal 3 as we just discussed. Push the cloth back. Let it cool. Uh, the middle one, which for me is uh, the yellow one, 
come into the middle pickup. It's going to go to terminal 2. sorted and the bridge pickup we're gonna go straight to terminal one there Okay, so as it stands, that is actually how a standard strat is wired. Um, it's been away, I suppose I wasted half an hour. However, now we're going to start wiring up this little toggle switch. Now to do that I'm going to use black wire, just so it's easy to differentiate between the yellow and the black. I uh, don't want too much yellow going in. So quite simply, to connect the neck to the middle uh, to connect the neck to the toggle switch, excuse me, and uh, take a length of wire, and that's going to go to the same solder terminal that we've just connected the neck pickup to, so that's number three. So I'm just going to pop that in. Gonna run that down and that's gonna go to this terminal here of our switch. So the outer one. Just like that. And then finally we're going to connect another jumper wire from the middle, middle terminal of the toggle switch going to the input of the volume here. So that wire we've already got in, I can finally solder that in place. i just get I don't want it to be too long. That'll do. There we go, I'm just going to connect that to the input of the volume. 
and then we are pretty much done. Okay, sorted. So the final thing, the final thing we need to do is just uh, wire up and connect the jack socket, and then we're going to plug it in, test, uh, make sure everything's working, and hopefully. When I started this parts cast the best part of six weeks ago, hopefully I can actually start playing it. Right, so I've got everything wired in, plugged in, ready to test. Uh, just a couple of quick pointers. So you see here, these are the two wires from the jack, and as we did with the pickups, uh, they've all been twisted together. Uh, the two black wires here, uh, you'll remember from the previous video here, uh, this is the ground from the Faraday cage, the shielding. That needs to get connected to the ground as well. And this ground, this black wire here, is the ground coming from, I'll just turn it over to show you, the bridge, which is this wire here, so on many strap claws there's a little little ledge here so you can just uh, twist it around and solder, and that's how you ground from the bridge, so the beauty of working on straps is that you can test everything before you actually put your strings on because it's obviously going to be a bit infuriating if you haven't if it's not working and you've got to take your strings off again so uh, one way to do that, plug everything in obviously into your amplifier and then you need a metallic object something blunt, uh, so it is known as a screwdriver test but personally I don't really want to put something too sharp just scratch the pole pieces on the pickups saying that it is a relic so anything goes um, so obviously all you do is you just tap the pickup pole pieces when everything's plugged in just to test that everything works. So I'm going to run through it as we normally would, so with the selector all the way forward, that should be neck pickup only, and you can clearly hear that ticking means it's on. Uh, we'll move it back a position, that should be uh, the neck and the middle on together. So there's the neck, there's the middle. Move the switch into the middle position, that should obviously just be the middle pickup, and you can hear that ticking there. Uh, we'll flick it back one more, that should be the middle and the bridge only, and that's working nicely. And all the way back, position one, although me I'll call it position, position five, should just be the bridge, and that's the bridge working there. So, as you can see, this little toggle switch this is why it's on a bracket because you can quite literally, it's literally just peeking through. I lift that up a little bit, you should be able to see. There we go how low it is, uh, which for me anyway is perfect, so I'm just going to flick that on, flick it forward, so now we should have, with the selector where it is on the bridge, that switch should activate the neck pickup, so we should have the bridge and the neck, there's the bridge, there's the neck, and then when we push it forward, we theoretically will now have all three, so you've got the middle and the bridge, uh, the, yeah, bridge in the middle as normal, and then with the neck pickup activated, the neck as well, so all three working. Perfect. So thanks very much for watching guys, I hope you learned a couple of things. Uh, essentially it's exactly the same as standard strat wiring, but you're putting in a mini, mini toggle switch between the neck pickup and the output, um, which allows you to turn it on and off at will. So thanks very much for watching, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to get in touch, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>